Hey there, Falcon fans. This is Paul Frields. I'm going to show you uh, another very cool effect that comes in the UVI Falcon arsenal. As you know, I'm a huge fan of UVI Falcon. I think it's the best sound design tool out there. It just gives you literally unlimited possibilities. One of the really cool uh, effects units that you will find in Falcon is called the feedback machine. And it basically lets you process an effects rack in a loop mode. In other words, the output of the effect comes back into itself. Let me give you uh, an idea of what we're talking about. So I, I have a basic kind of plucky synth patch here or a key poly keys, I guess. <laughs> Okay, great. Let's um, just tour through real quick so you can see what's happening here. And I'm only doing this so that uh, you get an idea of where the sound is coming from. Um, we've got uh, a simple analog set up here. We've got some unison. We've got a square wave with, uh, sitting as a uh, sub oscillator, and there's a bit of white noise under that. This is going through a filter, uh, the VCF20 Dual, which is a great sounding filter. And then all that is coming through, up through the layer where really there are no effects going on. And at the program level, we're running it through a Thoris for some nice smoothing, a chorus, uh, putting it through a little bit of reverb. There's some shelf EQ that just uh, brings up the lows and highs, just a smidge, very subtle, just a couple dB, and then a maximizer uh, to keep things under control and keep the patch uh, very robust. So, all right, so that all that together kind of gives you uh, this patch. So, you know, good sounding, good sounding patch. Um, we're going to add a feedback machine and we're going to do this so that we add, um, we're going to try and do a shimmer reverb. That's a fun way to use the feedback machine. There are a billion things you can do with it, but this is one of the fun things. So what we're going to do is we're going to run down here looking for the effect rack. And here it is. Let me close this up so it's a little easier to see. Um, under the effect rack area where you find the, the regular effect rack, which, by the way, is covered on another video. I'll put a link uh, at the top right here that you can click on if you want to see how the original effect rack works. The feedback machine is basically like uh, a specialized effect rack. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag that in between the chorus and the verb because I want the verb to uh, take in whatever is processed, but I want the chorus effect to come into the feedback machine. Now, it looks a lot like an effects rack. You've seen that before, but it has a few things that are automatically part of the feedback machine. There is a dial for delay time. And what this represents is the amount of time that the system will wait. Falcon will wait before it loops things back in. In other words, the effect rack here will uh, process the, the sound and then it will wait this amount of delay time before it puts it back in. And that way you can have delays sort of come in in steps one after the other. And then there's a feedback knob. And this does what you would imagine. It controls the amount of the sound that feeds back in. So in other words, at 50%, each successive pass through the feedback machine will be at half the volume, essentially. Finally, you have a mix knob. And then this mixes the entire signal of the feedback machine back into your patch. Uh, so you do want to be careful here when you're using the feedback machine. Um, when you're when you're just starting, I would be careful not to send the feedback up to the top or the mix up to the top because it can have really unforeseen effects. And, you know, Falcon is going to put out as much sound as you like. And if you are working on speakers or headphones with high volume, uh, that can really hurt your ears, hurt your hearing, and it might damage your equipment. So do be careful with that. Usually this is a good place to start 50 and 50. Um, usually I find that I don't even use that much in my actual patch, but this lets me hear what I'm doing. All right. So great. Now that we know what the feedback machine is, what should we do with it? Because right now it's not not doing anything. The patch is still basically exactly what it seems like. So let's run into the feedback machine and you'll see that there's a chain here. So we'll select the chain, 
go up to effects. And this means that we've all, again, like the effect rack, it means that we've already been moved through the layers of, of, of uh, patch. And we are looking at the chain, the first chain for the feedback machine. And as with an effect rack, you can have as many chains as you want. All of them will be passed through as part of the feedback loop. You could do a couple different feedback machines in parallel if you like. You could put feedback machines inside an effect rack if you like. Uh, it, there's literally no end to the things you can do. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a chain here. We'll call this chain, uh, let's call this shimmer. How are we going to start? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to look for a pitch shifter first, because typically that's what you find in a shimmer. It's a uh, it's a sort of a, a sound that continues to regenerate higher and higher harmonics. And we're going to make this very simple. Uh, we're just going to use the preset for an octave. Um, and uh, I usually like to dial in just a bit of fine tuning, just a couple cents or so um, to make it interesting. <laughs> 20 milliseconds isn't bad if I shift it way up. It might be, seems a little long to me, so. We'll keep it at this, 30. 30 milliseconds. And so hopefully you're already hearing what it's doing. If I hit one key, you're hearing that uh, sound uh, octave up again and again. And so it gets, you know, pretty high. If you want to hear a little more what's going on here, let's go over to the feedback machine control. Let's turn up the delay time um, really far. And now you're going to hear what's happening step by step. There you go. So you can hear how that's octaving up each time. And so I'm just moving this delay time back so that you really are not hearing the steps. All right. Sometimes you get that sort of chirping effect, uh, depending on what the window size is for the shimmer. So let's go back over to the effects. Maybe we'll turn up the window size a little. There, that's better. There we go. Get a little less of that chirping. So I like to turn it up when we're doing something like this. Okay. Now that we've got that shifting, that's wonderful. Um, but I'd really like that sound to kind of hang on a bit. And so... What I might try and do here is put in some delay taps, right? And uh, we'll use we'll, we'll make this timed so it might be useful later on in a uh, in a uh, composition. And I'll turn up the feedback a bit, and I will shift the time just a bit for some width, modulate it a little bit, and yeah, fifty percent. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> All right, that's pretty nice. Um, in order to smooth it out, here's something that I like to do also, uh, something with a, sh with a shimmer verb like this, is I might take the spark verb, throw it at the end here, um, add some shape, add a little bit of pre-delay, and let's see, turn up the time, and we're going to bring the low decay down and the high decay up just a bit. <laughs> kind of smooths it out. Another thing you do is try the output all the way up. And then I can kind of control how long that goes on with the decay of the shimmer verb or of the uh, spark verb. Turn it way up. And I get a very long decay. So this is this is something I might I might want to modulate, right? I might want to um, for example, I could take this, add an effect rack macro, and uh, that's a continuous. Let's see. Um, let me find it in our patch. Go out here to edit, and we'll call this. Oops. Let's call this shimmer length. Or actually, we know we're in a shimmer, so let's just call this length. And what you're going to see is up in the feedback machine. Now I've got a now I've got a mark for length. Now, of course, what we're going to see is with this length, if I set this down to zero, uh, and I, well, actually, if I wiggle it a little bit, let's wiggle, and 
yeah, what you're going to see is that it really, it shut off the entire reverb. Um, it's down at its minimum time, 200 milliseconds. I don't love that. So it's not very useful. So let's go back over to the macro and let's see. Um, pop over here to the feedback machine. Look at this length macro and uh, let's have it selected over here. Do, do, do. And now that we've got that, um, I'm going to change the offset so that it's at about yeah, maybe 15, 20% and wiggle it a little. Let's see where that ended us up. Decay is about, uh, what does it look like? Two se Oh, perfect. Two seconds. That's what I was hoping for. And then uh, again, you know, looking at this macro, we're going to, I'm also going to turn this down. I don't think the maximum is really going to be that useful. So I'm going to take this down to about, I don't know, somewhere between 40 and 50%. And again, going to the feedback, let's wiggle this up to the top and let's see where it came out within the effects. And we're at yeah, about three to four seconds. That's, that's pretty good. I think I could actually use a little more than that. So I think that we'll, yeah, let's, let's turn this up to 60 70 percent yeah there we go and then now that we have that set we'll look at the feedback machine again and we'll wiggle this around look at the effects and see where that topped us out Ooh, 11 seconds i like it okay cool so it's nice and wide That is a lot. That's a little more than I might want to use, but I think that's perfect. When you are using a macro like that, you know, send it up to a little louder than you might like to use. And that way you've got some room to work with. So we'll turn this down to about 50%. In fact, I'll just put 50% and see how that sounds. Nice. That's a really usable little shimmer now. And notice how that is passing back through the spark verb, uh, through the shelf and maximizer and everything else that's good. Now, I can also control the mix, so I can turn this mix down of the shimmer. It's a little less. If I turn it way up, now the dry signal is getting lost in the shimmer. That might be useful for you. I'm going to take this to about 40 or 50%. down just a bit nice and I might send a little less feedback too I can turn the length up nice Okay, and if I like this, uh, if I like this effect, I could save this. So I could save this as a preset on that feedback machine, and call it uh, Shimmer Verb One. And now it's available as uh, as a, a preset, and I can call this up anytime, uh, wherever I can use an effect rack or a feedback machine. I can place this preset, and I have an uh, amazing little Shimmer Verb that uh, that I've already created. Um, I'm going to include with this video, not just the shimmer verb, but I'm going to include a couple others that I made. I made uh, a fifths version as well. And uh, one of my other octave types, I'll include these with this video, you can download them, put them in your own user presets folder, and use these for yourself. And hopefully this will give you some tools and some know-how for your next project. Whatever you make, I hope that you will share it. Uh, that is the best part about creativity is sharing it with others. And so I hope this inspires you to do that as well. And until then, I hope you have a lot of fun with Falcon. And my name is Paul Freelds, and I'll see you next time.